And if you won't give me one minute, till I convince you, I am not confident. I'm, it's just a regular night. Me, I'm just, I'm just chilling on my phone. Like, I'm just buzzed. But then, like, I get a text from Wiz. And it's, it's on. I had to go check the page. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> I had to go check the page. He's like, yo, bro, studio tomorrow. I was like, who is? Like, the, the message I even texted him was so out of excitement. I was like, if I know comic, I die. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. But one of, the, one of the things that is unique about you is your tone, your, your sound. Personally, I don't think I've heard anybody sound like you. Did you hear anybody that sounded like you or who specifically in terms of like, did you have any vocal training or is this just the natural way that you sounded when you sang? Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on, man? This is the Afrobeats podcast special. We had to go look for this guy because I know he couldn't come to the studio. My brother wakes up so freaking late. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Sad. Ladies and gentlemen, is the amazing Bojo. Yo, I'm with the big shop C. We outside. Listen, oh bro, you've had an amazing 2021. Oh and listen, before we go into that 2021, I really want to get to learn about your story. Talk me through your journey. I know you use social media a lot, Twitter. What was the beginnings of Bojo? So uh, basically, like, I've... I say I'm, I was this kid that just necessarily, you know, enjoyed every element of what music was bringing. Maybe because like my dad used to play a lot of the bands, Olu Maintain, mm. Bob Marley, Lucky Dube, you know. I had a very great foundation like musically. And then like joining the school choir, you know, basically just singing. I started like writing rhymes at like 11 because at the time I was, I enjoyed what rap was like, you mm. feel me? what hip-hop was all about. So, you know, like I said, just basically grooming myself like in the music space was technically all that I enjoyed at the time as a kid. So, you know, imagine having that love for music at such a tender age. And even when I go into university, I, I even stopped doing like like basic music stuff. Where did you study? I was studying in Babcock University, mm. you know. And ha from high school, like I was doing school choir, like valedi valedictory services, you know, performances. It was wild. So, you know, stopping in uni was because I needed to focus, like, mm. proper. And then, like, 300 level was when, like, I proper picked it up again because, you know, I was doing, like, IT at the time. Mm. And so, like, I started listening to, like, I used to listen to a lot of Burner Boy because, like, he was fresh. <laughs> you know, if, you know, he gave me some some zeal, like, mm. oh, what kind of music is this and I could actually kind of make this kind of music. So, you know, I started listening to like Bernard J. Hoss, you know, um, Buju Banton a lot. Um, that explains the name, right? Yeah, Buju, Buju is also kind of, Buju means breadfruit in like native Jamaican. Wow. It's like a nickname given to like chubby people. So, you know, yeah, man. So Buju Banton, his mom used to call him Buju because when he was younger, he was a lot chubby. So, you know, um, it was an amazing thing. Cause, but then I now wrote it into like a poem called Beauty Underneath Just Understood. So it had a more deeper meaning to me. Because, I mean, aside it meaning, oh, chubby guy, mm. it's also like I found something that was unique about my sound. And I thought it was beautiful and it could change my life. You feel me? So, yeah, I started recording like professionally, like, and dropping music out in like 2018. So, and... I was getting like a little buzz, you know, there about just trying to build like a proper fan base because I was dropping music on SoundCloud and, you know, trying to, at the time, even shout out to the Ote guys because a lot of time they were the ones that pushed us to, oh, you know what, you could actually make music and actually just put it out, even if it's not on some, oh, you don't blow type of. So they gave you that inspiration to try it and do it yourself. And so like, yeah, because it's like, right, these guys are like my age mates and how come they have music out? Because, you know, and, and then the South Cloud community was kind of strong in Nigeria because we were trying to listen, you feel me? Because uh, everybody was like, okay, you know, well, what's, what's new, you feel me? And then, like, it started evolving. Like, 2019, um, I made a deliberate effort to go out on the ocean with my friends, and I was singing, you feel me? So, I, 
my friend took a little video of me like singing while I was on the on the Kano, you know. And we're in Marokko, it's like a river Rhine area. So it was it was that was I think was the first breaking point for me because it's like um when he took that video and he put it up and people are like, Oh who's this guy? And that was Commander, I was singing Commander and then like everybody was like, Okay, you need to drop this song. So I put out Commander at the time. And it was a nice buzz because everybody's like, okay, rah, this is some guy that can sing, you know. And then later on, I also re and I realized, like, oh, there was a little power. There was power in social media, like, to a large extent whereby people could, people could actually listen to you. And I tapped into that. And then, like, you know, I started putting out, like, snippets a lot. And I put out one snippet, and I'm like, oh, um, I really love a verse from Zlatan. And he actually jumped on it like three weeks later. And that was what really skyrocketed my, you know, my career. Cause listen, listen. One of, the, one of the things that is unique about you is your tone, your, your sound. Personally, I don't think I've heard anybody sound like you. Did you hear anybody that sounded like you? Or who specifically, in terms of like, did you have any vocal training? Or is this just the natural way Buju sounded when you sang? To be honest, this is just me, undiluted. Yeah. You feel me? It's like, what, what drives me is the, the zeal to be unique in whatever I'm doing. It's like, these days, like I said earlier on, I used to listen to a lot of Burner Boy. Mm. If you know what Burner Boy was to me at the time of like, 2013, 2012, 2014, 2015, 2016, he was like a breath of fresh air for me. You know, he took lyricism very seriously. He took storytelling to a whole nother level. And that was what I was trying to do. You feel me? And like I said, I was also listening to a, lot, a whole lot of j Hoss because he was, he had depth. You feel me? He, he was somebody that could make me relate to an environment I'd, I'd never been in, you feel me? Like, if you could take me somewhere there yeah. without me not even being there, you feel me? I needed to be able to make that sort of impression too with music. So that's why when I started making music, I started taking it very seriously. It's like, it's why till now I don't really freestyle. I, I, don't, I can't say I, I freestyle. I write a lot yeah. more, yeah, you feel me? Because I feel like it's stronger when it has meaning, mm. you feel me? So that's... That's me. That's my power. That's my uniqueness. You speak about Burner Boy, and it's obvious how important and influential mm. Burner Boy has been yes. to you. When he, how did he, how did you get the call that he was going to jump on your remix, mm. and what was that moment like for you yeah. to actually team up with Burner Boy? It was wild because like, this was like, 2020, 2019, December, you know. Burner had such an amazing year, bro. Like, you know, coming up the Grammy nomination and everything. But you know, what blew my mind was the fact that at the time, they were looking for me, but I couldn't. And my phone was my phone was bad at the time. You know, it's it's just throwing you back to 2019, so you understand how it was then. So it's like how things were low. <laughs> yeah, but it's like my phone was bad, so it's like. Important people were trying to reach me and I couldn't necessarily like access it because for some reason the screen was blank. Mm. So like someone called me, I'm like, why are you calling me, man? Till I fix my phone, I don't necessarily want to pick, but all this time it was Burner's team. So <coughs> so it was I think when I fixed my phone eventually, um I got a text like, yo, I've been trying to reach you. Um um Burner is trying to talk to you. And so I called, the, I thought it was a prank. You feel me? Because it's like, rah, burn boy, really? Are you don't. <laughs> when he was inflamed. He's so like, bro. And so he called me. And then he says the same, this number's called me and says the same thing. He's like, I've been trying to reach you. And it's like, bro, please. And I tell him, bro, please stop playing with me. He's like, bro, I'm not playing with you. Like, I'm going to give you an address. And I need you to take this as seriously as possible. So yeah. And he gave, sent me the address. And I was like, Okay, so we got to the address, and you know, I got got into the apartment, and then I actually like Burner came out in, like on the towel, <laughs> and he was like, Who, "Where's Buju?" And then he saw me, and he's like, "Ra, you you sang Lenu?" I was like, "Yeah." It's like that song makes me feel like I'm floating, man. I heard it in the club, and I, I had to tell him that they should play it.
quick message from Alat NG. I'm joined by Fumilayo from Alat, of course, NG from Wema Bank. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Uh, we're here to speak about the app, the banking app, Alat.ng. Yes. Please speak to me. First of all, what is this banking app? So it is a bank. Great. Not just an app. It mm. is a bank. Um, and essentially what it does is it allows you to do any banking transaction from the comfort of your phone. Wow. What is interesting is that you even sign up right there from your phone. You don't have to go to any banking hall to do anything. So you upload your picture, your signature, everything you do from the comfort of wherever you are. And it takes just five minutes. Now, a lot of us in diaspora want to have banks in Nigeria, bank accounts in Nigeria. And one of the biggest problems we've faced or the challenges we face is, is it the VPN number? Is it the v how do we cross that hurdle? Awesome. So what we've done, and um, if you go to our site, mm. alat.ng, we have a list of um, agents in the UK here where you can go to and register for your BVN. And interestingly, we've added on the NIN. Right now, you need the NIN to do everything, everything. in Nigeria. So once you do that, it's, it's possible. Again, like three times. You feel me? It was wild. Because what does that do to you? Bro, it, it was different because in the first instance, I'm, I'm first, I'm floating in some sense because it's like, this is Burner Boy. And like, I'm not, I'm not forcing my music on him. I'm not having to play him anything. And he's saying this about my music. You know, it put me in a whole different space because it's like, I'm chasing you, you feel me? And, mm. and then you actually acknowledge what I'm doing, mm. which is now wild. So, you know, he now goes into the conversation of, yo, okay, you know what, play me some shit. So I start playing Brandon music. And he's like, I'm signing you. So, wow. Yeah, it was wild. So, uh, the first, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, it's like, how? <laughs> you know, because he's like, like, I hear so much potential. So what exactly do you want to do? Do you want me to hop on the remix? Wow. Or do you want us to make more music? I was like, bro, anything you want us to do. He was like, you know what? Let's first start with the remix. And then he helps on Lenu, pays for the video. That day, you know, he's like, I'm going to call TJ Omari. So it was, my life moved like, so everything just flashed. The funny thing is I've got like a family member of yours here that always used to speak to me about you mm -hmm. in 2019, my brother. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so... Every moment from the song to when you got to the remix, he always kept me abreast. He is just excited as you were. You joined Bernard's team. You've now moved on since then. You're doing your own thing. What have you learned from being a part of a team that has one of the biggest superstars in Afrobeats and a bona fide superstar in the world, a Grammy winner? What have you learned that you've taken on your own journey now? Well, personally, like... I've learned the act of, you know, um, focus in some sense. Because for me, f okay, for for a little story, it's like 2020, I necessarily didn't necessarily pull out music. Mm. 2020, I only put out like Len remix yeah. and then like So Lovely close to the end of the year. So like, let's say like I had like nine months hiatus, which is very shaky mm. for like an artist that is just coming up yep. but it's different when you're not looking at it like a chain but you're looking at it like as an avenue to get better it's like i say within that period like my writing got better like my storytelling was on another level so if there was one thing i could understand from all that grooming was like when you when you finally find it it will definitely last, you feel mm. me? So you just have to be focused on whatever you're doing because a lot of things could have distracted me. I could have been feeling like, oh, this is some career wrecking moment. Mm. But me, I was like, you know what? You're not going to hear from me now, but when you hear from me, I'll be fully ready, you feel me? So it's like, when 2021 came, I was like, this is a no brainer. Like, I feel like even if I don't need to do it on a label, I want to do it on my own, but I need the world to hear what I've been working on. You feel me? So even I, I went and had the I, I went and had the conversation with Brenda. I was like, bro, 
I feel like I want to do this on my own. And you know, he was surprised. He's like, really? I was like, yeah. It's like, it's because I feel like I have so much to prove. And it's like, I will make you proud. And that's what I told Brenna. And he's like, okay, you know what? Do it. I got you. So I had everything in front of me. It was like almost starting afresh. But I was so ready for whatever was coming. You feel me? And so like I started working a lot more like I usually do. And so, like, I did work with Black Bones. I did the work with Laddie Poe. Hit, hit, hit. <laughs> Black Bones, <laughs> hit. <laughs> Laddie Poe, hit. Those were monster yes, records man. that changed the yes, game. Yes, but it was, it was wild because, you know, um, it was April. April, Black Bones dropped. And he went number one. It was wild because my name was on that song. And, you know, we went number one, though. You know, it was Black Bones, Amare, and Buju. And it's like, who are these new kids that just went number one now? Ladipo drops in May and goes number one too. So this is the hack. I have two songs yeah. on the top five as of May. And it's wild, like, who's that Buju guy? And then I drop Outside. So now I have three songs on that top five. And it was wild because when Brenda came back to Nigeria, he was like, I'm proud of you. And I've not, I've not heard an I'm proud of you that made me feel something. Because mm. it was crazy. Because it just took me back to the conversation of me telling him, I'm, I'm going to make proud. you proud. You feel me? So the, the effect of that mentorship mm. was, was more on how strong you could prepare your mind. Like, my, I, I was trained mentally. There's, there's a lot of things that I, I had to undergo, like, understand too you know about the game itself and you know everything generally it's like you just have to be a better version of yourself before you put yourself out there you feel me it's one of the reasons why i even want to be a project guy now it's like Bernard told me it's like you know when you put out when you put out music sometimes never forget like you know singles are more like trailers so when you put out a project it's more like a whole movie you feel me? So you should never forget that there's a movie behind the whole trailer. You that's that's yeah, a fantastic <laughs> idea, man. Now, you you had the hits with Bling, with Ladipo. You had your single. You dropped the project, and then you're in the studio with Skid. Talk to me about because okay, so it was it was like in July. You know, I'm, it's just a regular night. Me, I'm just, I'm just chilling on my phone. Like, I'm just buzzed. But then, like, I get a text from Wiz. And it's, it's on, I had to go check the page. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I had to go check the page. He's like, yo, bro, studio tomorrow. I was like, Wiz? Like, the, the message I even texted him was so out of excitement. I was like, if I know comic, I die. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm gonna no, be I, there. I'm gonna be there, but I was like, bro, studio? Where, bro? If I don't come, like, don't worry, bro. It, it, it was mind blowing. So, like, when I got into the studio and Wiz was like, ah. it's like, Buju, like, I love your music. It's like, Wizzy, you love my music? It, it was it was mind blowing. It's like, right. And then, you know, it's, we just start, it's like, ah, let me play you some stuff. So, we starts playing beats. Like he's like, I came to the, I came to the. It's like I came to the country to work on like, um, a deluxe, and and I was like, ah, with the whole deluxe, bro, because Made in Lagos was such an amazing project. It's like, rah, oh wow. It's like, it's like, don't worry, man. There's, I feel like there's some sounds I still need to tap, and you know, so that day we made like four songs, like we were just recording a lot, and then but mood stuck out for Wiz. I don't, I don't know why, because he was like, I think we, when, even when I left the studio that day, you know, I think he got back to London and he texted me, he's like, yo, you see that song? You need to re-record it and send it to me. And even my, Wiz is one of the most patient people I've ever worked with because he's like, you know, him, him being in a rush to even prepare his project at the time, I told him like, oh, I needed to take some time off for my voice to get my voice back proper. And he was so cool with it. You know, it's different when Whiskey. Bro, it was wild. You know, I was like, that's a whole style. There's a lot there's a lot of people that could take that differently. Like, mm. ah, or you don't want to do it or something. But he's like, Oh, bro, take all the time you need, bro. Like, I just need you to get it right. 
And when I sent the version to him, he was super excited. It's like, we're going to mess this whole face up. You feel me? So I think he didn't play me his version till I got into London. Like, very surprising guy. He's like, pull up to the studio. I want to show you something. And he plays me his verse. And it was amazing because there, there and then in that room, like, I realized, like, I'm in the studio, I'm in the room with a legend. Because, and it's different because music actually brought me here. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, because I, I got into the same space with him and he, you know, he's somebody that tells me, oh, I love, I love your music. Like, wow. I am a fan of what you're doing. You feel me? It's why, like, we have such an extending relationship that, oh, anytime he's close by, oh, pull up, we should actually make music together. We should actually do something together. And a lot of people on social media will be surprised because of all the social media noise that maybe you were disrespectful wow. or whatever. You know, at, at, at the time, like, I, I was also very pertinent about that because it's like a lot of people didn't understand, like, coming from a stage where I didn't, I didn't even know I was going to be, I was going to be a musician. You know, it's like, I'm, firstly, I'm young, I have cheap data and I'm I'm just very silly. yeah I'm just being silly you feel me so me I'm I'm having oh the wild time but I, I, futuristically I'm thinking oh I'm gonna end up in one office or something mm -hmm. I'm gonna just work some random but God turns me into a musician so it's different when I now see people like criticizing me it's like what did I do oh it's like oh so shit it's it's like this though you feel me so it's like. It's a whole different thing. Like I said, like it's how life sort of plays to teach you, you know, to actually make you, and that's how you grow, really. Because yeah, man. Listen, you had um, what's going on? We need to go now, now. All right, man. We need to get him out of here. Don't worry. We we'll go. Let's go. We need to go. We'll do it again. Big mood. Big mood. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.